Hey you guys and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video we're going to be doing a tutorial. It's going to be <laughs> a corner toy box or a corner hammock for your ferret or pet cage. This is ferret size so that's a pretty big one. You can make them smaller. Um, basically I have a very large custom order um, that I'm working on currently and some of the items that were requested are items that I don't have up on my Etsy shop and they're also items that I don't have tutorials for on my YouTube channel. So I thought it would be a great idea while I am working to fulfill this order that I also do the tutorials on the items that I don't have tutorials on already. So um, there's going to be a couple more tutorials coming up in the next couple weeks of things that I haven't done before and this is one of them. And so without further ado I'm going to jump into the video. If you like this video please click the like button. If you're not subscribed please subscribe to my channel. Click the notification bell so that you never miss an upload. And if you have any video ideas, any tutorials or just any ideas in general that you want to hear about or see, drop that information in the comment section and that's it. I'm going to make a square. So we're going to start. I already started my lines. And I'm going to make my square 16 by 16. Okay, so now you have your square. Mine 16 by 16. And we are going to measure from point to point. And then pick whichever one you like and set this aside. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to cut our sides and our, our sides to the triangle. Now I measured my sides. They're 16 by 16 by 22 and a half. So we're going to have to cut out two 16 by 16s and a 22 and a half. Now, remember that for fabric like this, you're gonna to wanna to cut it so that when you're looking at your basket, your sloths aren't going the wrong direction. So I'm gonna cut mine this way. We're gonna start with the 22. Okay, so to help my basket keep its shape, I'm gonna be using what's called fusible fleece. Um, one side is rough, and that is the side that will fuse to your fabric, and the other side is not rough. So I'm going to be attaching fusible fleece to all of my pieces. So you're going to need a piece, a fusible fleece for each piece if you choose to use fusible fleece. You could also use cotton batting if you wanted to, and in addition, you could just not use anything, but your basket would probably not hold its shape. Now, when you do your fusible fleece, you're going to want it to not be the exact size of your basket so and you're going to need to iron it on um, so you want to find the right side of your fabric you're going to iron this onto the wrong side of your fabric now this is kind of this is too big so I'm going to trim this down some there we go this is how I fuse mine I just get a towel you can use an ironing board I use my cutting table and then just I use steam I don't know that you're supposed to but this is what I do it's fast and it steams it on there don't hold this down long you want to do this for no more than five seconds and pick up don't do like this don't do that um, you don't want to do that you need to put it down pick it up put it down pick it up And you're gonna do that you don't want any see like this you don't want that to be lifted up the rest is all held on there pretty good so i'm just gonna do this piece one more time and then you're gonna do that to all of your pieces so what you should have now is your bottom piece with your fusible fleece attached to both the solid color and the pattern fleece so the inside and the outside of your basket you should have the same an inside and outside piece for your sides with the fusible fleece and you should have your long side with the both both fabrics and the fusible fleece attached so now what you're going to do is you're going to sit your bottom piece aside and you're going to separate these all out by your pattern pieces so put all your solids and together and all of your pattern pieces together okay 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my long piece. You're going to take one of your sides. You're going to put it right side down. Now, I need to make sure that you're paying attention to your patterns so that they're going in the right direction. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to go like this. I'm going to line these edges up and I'm going to stitch along here. So now you've stitched that, so you should have something that looks like this. Now take your other short piece and flip it over. You're going to line it up to the edge and you're going to stitch down this side. Okay, so now that you've stitched both your short pieces to your long piece, you want to bring it together like this and stitch this. So now that you have your pieces all connected, you're going to take your pattern piece or whatever piece you're working on, so your pattern piece, and you're going to now connect this to this. You're going to clip this together so we can sew it. I want to make sure you want right sides facing together, but you want to make sure that your design is facing in the right direction. So you want to take your long piece is going to match up against the long edge. You also want to make sure that your sloths are, or for me it's going to be sloths, and the way that they're sitting like this is how I want them on, on my, against my fabric. So what we're going to do is we're going to go corner to corner. So right sides to right sides. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to pin mine, or clip, I'm going to clip mine actually. I use clips now. They're my favorite. Line up your corners. Right. Then once you get that done, you're going to spin it around. You're going to then, you need to clip your sides on. So you want to pin, clip down each side. So now you're going to stitch all the way around, about a quarter of an inch. And make sure that you're just stitching these pieces together. Okay, so now that you've sewn that, you should have something that looks like this. It's just a triangle. And you're going to do the exact same thing to the green piece. Okay, so I wanted to go over the corners, sewing the corners of the sides to the bottom of the basket. Um, I just wanna show you guys how I do my corners. It's really kinda of hard to see when the camera's so far away. So, I am almost at the corner, and as you can see, I have my sides lined up, and then we get down to here, and what I am gonna do is, first, I'm not gonna stitch to this tip, tip of this, um, basket of the bottom right here and the reason is it's too thin and it won't hold over time so I'm gonna come down to probably right about here maybe a little like right here and what I also do is um, I take my piece and I fold it and I lay it against this like this and then I stitch right to like where I said right before the corner so let's do that Then I'm going to lift up my presser foot. I'm going to swing the entire thing around so that I have my sides facing me. Now here's where it gets a little tricky. You obviously can't sew like this. So we're going to take this piece and you're going to swing it back underneath your presser foot just like this. And then you're going to want to make sure that you have your basket back where you're back to a side. And you just want to move this part out of the way. So there you go, just like that. Okay, so now that you've sewn both pieces, what you're going to want to do is flip them right side out just so you can check. You want to make sure that all of your corners are stitched, that there's no holes in it, that everything is closed, that, the, that all your seams are closed. You're going to want to do that for both of them. Okay, so now what you're going to do is get your pattern piece sit it upright like this, take your solid color and you're going to stick it inside your pattern piece and you're going to line up your seams. So pick a seam and start with it. You want right sides facing together and what I typically do is I will just pick a seam to start and I pin it like this. 
Now this could take some, it might take some finagling. You're going to probably have to move it around a little bit um, just to get everything lined up correctly. Okay, so now you have this. So some people use fleece for this. I personally, because I know this is for ferrets and I want it to be strong, I'm not going to use fleece. I'm going to personally use strapping. But you use whatever you feel comfortable with. I have a whole video, I'll put a link above, about how all the different ways you can hang a hammock. So these are going to be three inches when they're all said and done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of strapping, I'm going to fold it in half, and I'm putting it in the center of the seams in between each piece. And I'm clipping that in place. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to stitch all the way around the entire outside, but we need to leave an opening to flip it inside out. So I'm going to leave an opening here. I'm going to leave about a five inch opening and I'm marking it with two pins here and here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my sewing machine and I'm going to start on this whatever side. I'm going to start here. I'm going to sew all the way around to this pin and I'm going to stop. So I find it a lot easier to take off my tray when doing this part. You want to make sure that you stitch over your strapping at least twice. So back stitch over it at least twice. Okay, so now you have stitched all the way around the top of your basket and you've left a five inch opening. Take your pin out, find your opening, flip your basket inside out or right side out. I'm sorry, flip this right side out. All right, you got to take this and tuck it back inside of your basket. So find your edges, grab onto your little seam and just push the green into or whatever color you're using, push it into your basket. Now what you got to do, what I do, is I get my pins and I line up my edges. And I pin this so that it's nice and lined up. And I just want them to be lined up like this. And I'm going to clip these all the way around. And you can start to shape, you'll see your basket will take shape as you're doing this. I'm going to skip over my opening for a second. I do that last. Okay, so now you're at your opening. You want your opening to look like the rest of your edges, so you're just gonna, it'll naturally kind of fold in because you've created a seam. So you're gonna make, create your seam by tucking it inside and making them match up with the rest of the basket. All right. And now you have your basket, which will hang better once it's in your cage and it'll hold its shape a little bit better. So what you want to do now is you want to go to your sewing machine and you want to top stitch all the way around and you want to make sure that you close this opening. This is thick so what I recommend is that you go slow and that you maybe need to increase your stitch length. If you find it is too hard to top stitch the entire thing with your sewing machine for whatever reason just make sure that you stitch your opening closed, even if you have to do that by hand. It should be okay. My singer used to go and do these completely fine. Um, I just know it is thick, so just be careful and go slow. All right, so get all these fuzzies. That's that, and I'm gonna use these. Well, so I will send these with my hammocks. I always send these with my hammocks if I make straps like this. And that is how you make a corner hammock basket sort of hammock or toy box or whatever you know people call them a couple different things and just to show you guys the stitch once it's done th this is the decorative stitch that I did